shared among the professionals. Last week, PricewaterhouseCoopers came out with a fraud report. <laughs> and in that fraud report, we just do not we take it as, as a standard reports because that fraud report always uh, substantiated that fraud or at least shenanigans within any organizations were committed by the senior management down the line. Yeah? And in any given organization that they canvass in their survey, there are at least one third or 30 percent uh, uh, case reported on fraud. Yeah? And this is pointing to the fact that I, I said earlier, our effort to engage the professional bodies, because imagine if the, those who are entrusted <laughs> to, in your case, audit, or to do strategy for the businesses, or to design uh, control systems, are the very bodies or persons being the perpetrators of white collar crime, imagine the consequences of, uh, the, for the future, isn't it? So that's why in this uh, second uh, example, we always engage the professional bodies, particularly at least two professions. So number one, the bar council, because any given businesses, when they want to give birth to their uh, enterprise, they must go to legal instruments. Yeah? And the accounting profession, because of the historical uh, auditing and records that you have to uh, investigate, isn't it? Uh, I am uh, a member of Ethics Standard Board of Malaysian uh, Institute of Accountants for the past uh, coming to five years. And at that level of discussions, we always uh, uh, say to ourselves that we must engage, like what you are doing, the young up and coming accountants. Because if you leave them to their own, imagine the institutions of, for example, Arthur Anderson of the world is no more. Why? Because they themselves succumb to and go on uh, scandal, isn't that? So you cannot fault the clients by by saying that trust us. Now the whole world is asking, are you trustworthy enough, isn't it? So. Uh, that's a long answer to your short question. Uh, it's not one uh, solution fits all, but each, to my mind, the strategy was to engage the number one in any organization, meaning the managing director or the inspector general of police or, or even the chief uh, commissioner of any commissions, and ensure that they set the tone and follow through with uh, direct action plans that are reported transparently, measured properly, you know, and engage the stakeholders. No, I don't. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> because if you, if you are, if you can see it, then there shouldn't be an institute of this nature. The fact that Malaysia established it, this is the first of its kind in the whole world. There's none. All over the world. No. No. When I was, I was the first director being being appointed here. Uh, the first uh, then president was then Dato Sri uh, Dato Dr Sulaiman Mahbub. Um, yeah. Who later became uh, Tan Sri. Uh, he is chair of one of the GLCs around. Uh, both of us. He asked me to come in to help uh, help him strengthening the corporate governance, business ethics, and. Uh, corporate social responsibility agenda in this country. That was in 2004. Yeah? Why I say no? Because 15 years I have engaged, you name it, who is the biggest of it, of, of a mother institute of uh, the country? Suruhanjaya Syarikat Malaysia, right? Where we have all the regist registry of businesses and companies. Yeah? You have Securities Commission yeah, that takes care of the capital market and the, the uh, Bursa Malaysia and, and the likes. And about, we have about what, 1,000 odd uh, listed companies? Okay. Third echelon, we have the Kazana uh, listed uh, GLCs and GLICs, right? We have the EPF, LTAT and all the uh, sovereign wealth fund uh, agencies that we, we have. Every one of them, these players, at least in the private sector realm, every one of them is committed to this agenda on 
corporate governance, business efforts, and corporate social responsibility. And yet we have one MDB. Where do we go wrong? To my mind, there's only one place that we never touched, which is the Ministry of Finance and the Menteri Besar Incorporated or Ketua Chief Minister Incorporated in the state at the state level. You see, MOF at the federal level host all the other investment uh, state in the government linked companies and even set up their special purpose vehicle for whatever that the, com the country's agenda on economy right who monitors them exactly but at that point of time you have um, the prime minister holding the post of the ministry of finance See, yeah, on hindsight, you can say that's a wrong thing to do. But who says so then? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Nobody. Everyone take it as this is business as usual, mm -hmm. right? Even the this concentration of authority of the Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister uh, Office, as well as the chairmanship of certain GLCs, at least in Kazana, is still the, still the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. yes. You are talking about one person. Right? On hindsight, we can say that's wrong. But who says so then? So that's why I'm saying we didn't progress much. Because the fact is, at least for Malaysia, I think about more than 50%, perhaps about 60% of businesses are business to government or government to businesses. Unlike other countries, it's B2B, isn't it? Business to business. Exactly. Which is, you leave the, the commercial market to the market itself. Mm -hmm. But in Malaysia, it's not. But the market is efficient and effective out there. I mean, I mean we are not having the same kind of market here. So Indeed. So, so that is the paradox. In Malaysia, we, we here means the country, allow the government to be in business. Mm -hmm. And we allowed it structurally, if we, you follow what my, my example just now. So... Yeah, like I said again, yet we have one MDB. Imagine now, in a, on academics standpoint, we can uh, learn that one MDB started from Terengganu Investment Authority and then blew, blew up into certain uh, certain magnitude that they had now. But there's no check and balances. As we speak, at the state level, if you follow the Auditor General's Office report, for the state level uh, agencies like uh, MOF Incorporated, the report shows that most of them are not making any good profits like the commercial market, like the private sector players, isn't it? In fact, some of them were designed to fail. Yet, the directors of their boards, respectively, grew all the board remuneration. You know, so so it is a design and flawed system that we have. So there's not much uh, that talking like this, you know, uh, educating awareness uh, program will will have any traction. You know, two years ago, uh, Tan Sri Zeti, then governor of Ben Negara, spoke on good governance in UKM. Yeah? Uh, and I remember agreeing with her uh, that the country desperately need a good governance regime. Yeah? This is 2016, you know? before the whole uh, new Malaysia idea came into being. Right? So everybody clapped and everybody felt yeah, we have the good governance regime, even then. Why? Because the statistics and the numbers speak for, uh, for itself. We are getting FDIs, and Malaysia is going everywhere. We have countries like China courting us, uh, Middle East, Arab, uh, the Kingdom of Arab, Saudi Arabia. You know, everyone felt so good, isn't it? As if this is a new paradise. Yeah. Yet, disaster struck. What is that? 
that is where I suggested to Tanzil Zetis uh, good governance regime proposal to be uh, grounded with the fact that for a good governance regime to work, you must first and foremost have a good governor. It sounds so cliche, but nobody wants to do it because that's the hardest part of it all. How can you ensure, like we, our students, yeah, those uh, who studied accountancy, uh, law, business, management, yeah, has the right ingredient called integrity or ethical mind or proper conduct? We can assure them, isn't it? And yet, these are the same people when they graduate into the business world or be given a proper authority and trust will be the very persons that we depend upon our consequences for their decisions. Right? So my uh, suggestion to it all is we must have a good governor first before we have good governance. That's important. Uh, in university, who is the most trusted parties or stakeholders within? Not the vice chancellor, but the professors. If the students cannot trust the professors, if the professors themselves cannot trust themselves, if the professors are not professing what their knowledge yeah, push them or drive them to be, to be, not just to become, not just to say, but to be, to be that role model for the faculty members, their peers, and the students to look up and say, look, I hear you and I follow you. Rather than I hear you, but I can't see you are doing what you are saying. You're not walking the talk. What more reflecting these ideas that you are teaching or giving us notes to, <laughs> to, to read, you know? So we fail. We fail. What I'm saying, I'm not saying that the university fail, but I thought that that should be the arena where at least some good works can be done structurally. Why? Because you're dealing with the best intellects or the young minds of the country at any given time. But yet, 